Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you a preview of the upcoming custom creators in Alien War for free. A lot of this has already been revealed on my Discord server, so if you are interested, make sure you join it. The link is in the description below. And just a disclaimer, everything you see is subject to change and not finished. Alright, let's jump into it. I'm in the main menu and so far I implemented editors for weapons, armor and equipment items. If I click on one of these options, the game will ask me what kind of weapon I want to create. So let's start with a melee weapon. Now I can either choose to load one of my saved melee weapons or start from scratch and import a model. The supported model format is Wavefront Object. As you can see, the file browser now displays a list instead of large icons for certain file types for easier navigation. After importing a model, we're in the editor. The editor looks the same for all kind of items, but the available options can be different depending on the custom item type. The imported model is in the center, the camera can orbit around, and zooming is possible with the mouse wheel. We can also move the camera a bit. In the bottom part, you can see all materials of this object. The game will try to import material settings from the imported model, but the materials can also be edited directly in this editor. The available settings are similar to those of the clothing materials. We can adjust the color, how metallic and reflective the material is, and some materials can also glow in the emissive color and certain items can be transparent. On the left side there are some tools to do some basic modifications to the mesh like origin, position and rotation adjustments. And most importantly, we can adjust the size of the model so that it matches the size of all other content in game. Depending on personal preference or better contrast of the item, we can switch between dark and light mode. And right here in the bottom right corner, the render settings of the scene can be adjusted, which can help while editing certain settings. For instance, the object can be rendered transparent to see through it, mesh data like triangles or help grids can be enabled, or the scene lighting adjusted. While editing, it can help to switch between isometric and perspective view. This can be done in the top right corner, where the camera can also be focused on one axis. The panel on the right can be used to edit the actual item settings. The available settings depend on the custom item type, and each item has some basic information like a name and error which will be used to find and display the item in lists. Next up are more specific settings like where the weapon will be positioned if it's not equipped in the unit's hands. And these tools use the already known position and rotation handles from the passive unit animation editor and therefore should be very easy to use. For animations we can choose from one of the existing sets and can preview them as well. Then we can adjust melee weapon specific settings like damage related behavior. For sound settings we can choose between selecting one of the existing presets or load custom sound files for all different sounds a weapon can make. Last but not least are the collision settings. These are required to let the game know which parts of the weapon will cause damage. Because obviously you don't want the weapon grip to cause damage. You can choose between a variety of colliders, which I'll explain in a later video. The isometric view and axis alignment can help while editing these colliders. The equipment can then be tested directly in the editor, and as you can see, everything is working as if it was a vanilla weapon. Next up are ranged weapons. For ranged weapons, it's important that they face this direction. In case it doesn't, the rotation tool can be used to fix the orientation of the model. And in the settings, we have the base settings, which are similar to those of melee weapons again. And since the range weapons can contain multiple individual models like magazines or iron sights, the part which represents the actual weapon has to be selected. And then we can choose the animation preset and adjust the weapon positioning in the player's hands. For the shoot functionality, 
we can adjust which fire modes are supported, as well as settings like RPM, muzzle velocity and accuracy. The game also needs to know where the bullet will spawn, so to adjust that we can simply move this arrow to the end of the weapon barrel and that'll work. And the same can be done for the position where the bullet shells will be ejected. Optionally, the muzzle effect can be adjusted to match the other settings. In this case, the future effect will work. The weapon settings are determined by the caliber, which can be selected here. For now, only the in-game calibers can be selected, but maybe there will be custom caliber settings in the future. While adjusting the recoil settings, there will be a small preview window in the bottom left corner, which will preview the recoil for individual shots or automatic fire. Weapons like shotguns have internal magazines, but if the weapon uses an external magazine, the representing model has to be selected. If the weapon has detachable iron sights, you can create them as an individual model, which can then be selected right here. By doing that, the iron sights will be hidden if a weapon scope is attached. In this case, the scope is part of the main weapon model, so I can't select it. But I can adjust the zoom level of the scope right here. For first person aiming, the aim position has to be adjusted, which will show a preview again and an arrow right here, which can be used to adjust it. The sound settings are similar to those of melee weapons. We can choose between one of the presets or choose custom sounds for shooting, reloading and all the other options. Ranged weapons work with vanilla attachments and hopefully custom attachments in the future. To enable that, the modification slot has to be checked and adjusted. Range weapons also need collisions and usually a convex mesh collider is detailed enough for this purpose. Back on the testing range we can see that everything is working fine. Although they are technically not weapons, shields are in the weapon category as well. They are pretty easy to set up because they don't have many options. Again, we have some basic information like name, era and position settings. I'm just going to set this up real quick. Some of the vanilla shields use the color of the unit which is holding the shield. This can be enabled right here and the index of the material that will be adjusted can be selected. The armor class determines what kind of projectiles will be blocked and the material type will be used for sound and particle effects. And of course a shield needs collision detection, so we have to choose the collider. For this shape a convex mesh collider should work just fine. Grenades are one of the more complicated item types. First there are some basic settings again to adjust throw force and positioning. Then we can adjust the explosion visuals. We can either select one of the presets or create a custom particle effect for the explosion effect. This is an effect from earlier. Let me just reduce the size a bit. The particle editor features a lot of options to create unique and complex particle effects. For instance, I can quickly adjust the color and make particles fade out more. Or instead of only playing these bursts, I want a constant amount of particles spawning. Maybe some more noise. Some options like the trail width can be edited as curves. There are really a lot of options to explore and play with. Alright, back to the grenade settings, we can choose what will trigger the explosion an impact or directly after throwing with a delay. The type of grenade can be selected here, which will determine the following settings. For default explosions, the shockwave, flame settings, damage, range and damage falloff can be adjusted. Again, the sound can either be a preset or a custom sound. 
Collisions are required for the physics to work. And these settings at the bottom can be used to create sticky grenades and select whether the model will be destroyed when exploding or not. At the testing range, we can see that the grenade with custom particle system is working. Next up are custom armor items. All of these are pretty similar, so I'm just going to show custom chest plates. The most relevant settings are the armor class, armor health points and protection against sharp and blunt melee weapons. Now these settings can be a bit confusing, so there is an option to simulate armor hits to give an idea about how the armor will perform. The armor material will be used for sound and particle effects and armor perks can provide buffs to the unit wearing the armor. Obviously the armor needs hit detection so a collider is required again. And lastly the position can be adjusted. That's everything required to create a custom armor item. The last item I'm going to show are custom backpacks. But this model has a problem. If the origin is visible, we can see that it's in the center, but the actual mesh is far away from it. Now, while adjusting the position, the handle is at the object's origin, but the large offset makes it difficult to edit settings. In order to fix that, the origin tool can be used. It'll adjust the origin to make sure it's close to the actual mesh. There are different options, but the default one will work just fine in this case. Now that the origin is in the center of the mesh, the editing will be much easier. In this case, the isometric view and axis alignment can also help to improve the accuracy of the positioning. And for backpacks, we can add up to two additional weapon slots whose position has to be adjusted as well. And the amount of space for ammunition can be adjusted right here. There can be a lot of settings for some item types, but don't worry. Each setting has a short description in game, and if there are errors in the settings, the game will tell you what's wrong before saving or testing. That's pretty much all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you guys got an idea of how this stuff will work and agree that most of it looks fairly easy to use. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more updates. See you soon.